height of his criminal activities, he commanded an army of some of the country's toughest hardmen, who gave him their unswerving loyalty. Davey's been such a good friend to me. He's helped me out, he's got me out of this and got me out of that. I've been there for him any time. I'll put him on my leg, which is here. He's scabbed up at the moment because it was done a little while ago. Just, you know, you don't put anyone on your leg what you're going to live for for the rest of your life and they ain't going to be all a true friend. Oh, I don't know what gun to bring today. Could bring this one. But Courtney now insists he's gone straight and over the past 18 months he's been trying to establish himself as a celebrity. He has written his autobiography and has been telling the world about his gruesome deeds in a regular magazine column and in various television appearances. He is hoping the public's fascination for crime and criminals will turn him into a gangster superstar. I actually succeed in most ventures I set out for. Well, sometimes I might be late with the final product, but I will get there and it will take someone shooting me or locking me in prison to stop me being a celebrity now. I I'm bound for Hollywood and that's where I'm going. Unfortunately for Courtney, prison is now a very real prospect. He has been charged with conspiring to pervert the course of justice in a police corruption case. <laughs> if found guilty, he faces a lengthy jail sentence and the end of his fledgling career as a celebrity gangster. Sorry, Mum, it ain't all working out right. It's November 1999, and a large crowd of unpleasant-looking men are gathering outside Bow Street Magistrates Court. They are here to offer support to Dave Courtney, who is due to appear for a pre-trial hearing. Courtney's friends aren't the only ones to turn up. The media is also out in force. They know that Courtney is good value. As well as being a gangster, he is an outrageous self-publicist, and his appearance in court today does not disappoint. intend this to be such an embarrassment for them that they will walk away and go, God, I wish I never ever took him to court. Right? I wish I never heard the name. Right? And I truly think if there's been my downfall, it will be my trampoline into the big time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. You, you that me, right? Courtney's closest friends, Brendan and Seymour, bring the £50,000 bail in cash in a carrier bag. But the real action is happening inside. On entering court and seeing the policeman who has implicated him, Courtney proceeds to punch him in the face, knocking him to the floor. I always had faith in the British justice system. And I promise for as long as I've got a hold in my ass, I will continue to punch that geezer in the face every time I see him. Thank you. The policeman, who is also on trial, declined to press charges. It's the next morning at Courtney's Camelot Castle in South East London. He is a little concerned that punching a policeman in court might have repercussions. In anticipation of a visit from the police, he has pinned a note to the door asking them not to kick it down. Court jester Dave Courtney appeared in court today in orange. A jester's costume, complete with juggling balls, Courtney Forty of Plumstead appeared at Bow Street Magistrates charged with conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. The general public don't want to think that um, I've retired. They find it quite romantic that I'm still doing it and then and, and showing off about it. Um, it's not important to get in the papers, I just like it. Courtney is relying on his gangster image to build his celebrity career. But despite his flamboyant gangster lifestyle, he believes the age of the gangster is over. It's not the era to be a criminal, because they have got you trapped every way you can. You know, they, can they can look at you from the fucking moon, and that does not, that, that isn't all spacey, that's truth. My, my friends have been nicked from photographs of satellites. 
But before the police were so clever, and before they had so much money to spend on high-tech surveillance gear, then you could get a gangster pitting his wits against the policeman's wits. You know? And if you were clever, you was a good gangster. But it isn't just the police that concern Courtney. He's also worried about declining standards in Britain's criminal underworld. When I was active, that crime actually consisted of an awful lot of other things other than narcotics. But now, crime is basically drugs. You know, they have got no morals around, um, like myself, I wouldn't, if I was having a row with you, I wouldn't actually go and kick the fuck out of your missus, right, just to hurt you. But drug dealers, are called dr the drug industry would. You can actually get somebody shot for about 10 grand. You know, you can have a professional hit done for, say, 20 grand. So if you're doing drug deals where you're getting 500,000 pound cash, 2 million pound cash, right? I know people that would wipe out the whole of Stoke for fucking 2 million pound. I've been in positions where um, I've had to kill to save my own life. I've been in positions where I've had to put hole in somebody to save my own life. And given the same position again, I would do it about a second quicker. And which is why I really do not want to be in that game. I wasn't prepared to um, take them risks. I would rather fall behind financially with the other people that was in my sort of chosen profession. Actually succumb to having to wear a, a, body, a, a bulletproof vest, a gun indoors, my wife in a bulletproof car. Come on. That's my baby. But despite his stated desire to go straight, Courtney does not seem too concerned that his own children might decide to follow in his gangster footsteps. Give him a clean up. Huh? Clean him up. Yeah, I've done it. Um. I would give it most probably 12 to 18 months of my very best trying, my hardest, to persuade him not to go down that road. Huh? But if after that I could see that it was just in him, I suppose I'll get, I'll get well kicked up to bum for saying this, but if, he just, if that was the way I could see he was going, then I would help him along that way to do it properly, whether it be crime or not. In my little... Bed I lie, Heavenly Father, hear my cry. He's a better example to our kids than any other father could be to their kids. I'd say, because all the bad things that happen, they, that happen to him, they actually do bear the front of it, don't they? Like the visit into the prison and things like that, police coming into your house, kicking your door off in the middle of the night, getting you out of bed. Do you know what I mean? So they know, they know what... If living like that, if they live like that, that's the consequences of it. They know how it feels, it doesn't feel nice. Oh, man. Well done. I like that. Oh, do you want a poster? Yeah. Yeah. His impending court case is preventing Courtney from gaining media exposure. But his relentless self-promotion continues at local level. Yeah. Courtney has been asked to present medals at a martial arts demonstration in South London. Although it's not high profile, he's happy for any opportunity to maintain his public presence. But this is still a long way from an A-list celebrity event, and once again, he's not getting paid. <laughs> I'm making nowhere near as much money right now as I was when I was an active criminal. but. The carrot on a stick for me to persist in this way of life uh, is so great. You know, the one deal I do with this one film or one record deal or one book deal will earn me more than one signing of the paper than I ever on one job when I was active. This is like Courtney, folks. Nevertheless, Courtney gives a receptor crowd a spirited performance. <laughs> it's the morning the 19th of April 2000 and Courtney's friends are arriving at his house for another media event the funeral of Charlie Cray elder brother of the infamous Cray twins this is Wish look at that no, no, there's a friendly one you wouldn't like to live next door him would you this is my step aerobics instructor, <laughs> Big John. I don't know why they call him Big John. I've never actually seen him in the toilet. I haven't worked it out. 
Here's a very inter an interesting gentleman. Come this way. That there is Ian Freeman, world champion in my eyes anyway. No old barred fighting. Ian Freeman. Although Courtney provided security for Ronnie Chris' funeral, the Crays have declined to invite him to organize Charlie's and have instead hired an ordinary security firm. Some of Courtney's media friends have also suggested that he should not attend. It's very, 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 very hard because I've had a million phone calls to me you shouldn't go to the funeral if you're truly trying to say, um, I'm not like that no more. But the fact that I'm going, I'm not like that no more, doesn't necessarily mean to say I can't be respectful to a friend that I've had for 20 years. You know, I was in prison with Charlie for a year in a very, um, a very trying time for him. You know what I mean? And I feel quite close to him. And the fact that I'm sort of trying to turn over a new leaf, it's very unfair for people to warn me that I shouldn't go to his funeral because I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. It, it is a problem. English and Son. English and Son is the name of the um, funeral place. With Courtney's trial looming, the fate of Charlie yeah. Cray is a timely reminder of his own tenuous position. He would be a prime example of my, of my deepest fears. Just because it don't matter how innocent he is, if your second name's Cray or Courtney, you're getting killed. With him. You know, I do know that um, somewhere out there is some young fella going, I will not allow Courtney to sort of walk around and glorify the, the underworld as much as he does. Lay -lay. Lay -lay. Even if Courtney manages to escape conviction on his current charge, he can never be sure that his villainous past won't come back to haunt him. You can be living your life nicely in your new sort of in your new life and ten years into it some something pops up from the past and you get life imprisonment. You understand what I mean? So the fact that I'm behaving myself now and don't do nothing no more hasn't necessarily completely took away the threat of doing life imprisonment. You know, there's an awful lot of holes in the ground all around the world that I'm something to do with that I could get 20 years for any one of them are, that there was proof of, you know? Courtney has repainted the outside of Camelot Castle in an even more elaborate style. He has also stepped up security, adding more closed-circuit cameras. He says the police have placed his house under surveillance and bugged his phones. Today, Courtney must attend Bow Street Magistrates Court, along with three other defendants in the police corruption trial. He is now convinced that the authorities will go to any lengths to send him to prison. <coughs> they are obviously worried. They are obviously worried. Now, not only am I going to um, get off with this, but I'm going to come out smelling the roses. So, damage limitation, they've just sat there and said, well, see, as we've got Courtney actually um, in court, is it? What can we do to him? I'm actually um, on trial for perverting the course of justice, where a policeman is saying that I was his informant in a case where... Uh, a woman was arrested for drugs. You know, this is their, this is their last onslaught to try and do me some harm. I don't think they're actually going to get a conviction out of it at all, but whatever harm they can sort of throw my way to sort of hinder me in my new um, future, I'm sure they will. I just want to relax. You know I mean, you don't want to do the cat and mouse thing with the old boo anymore. But the more they do it, and he doesn't retaliate, it's like as if he's showing them that they're winning them. As long as they're all right, they can throw what they want out of the truth. But it does sadden me. It makes me want to cry. I look at him sometimes sleeping in my ball. Just out of, I just feel so sorry for him because I know he's trying to do his best. He's trying to do the right thing. Corney has been told he will have to face a full jury trial at the Old Bailey. But it's not just the legal system he has to contend with. Being named as a police informer is considered a heinous crime by his underworld peers. Mad Frankie Fraser is one of the old guard in the British underworld. He became infamous in the 50s and 60s as one of Britain's most violent gangsters. Fraser has been closely following the progress of Courtney's case and has a lot to say on his website about Courtney being named as a police informer. Though he holds back from accusing Courtney of being a grass, 
he makes it clear that the underworld will be outraged if it's found to be true. Gangsters today appear to have embraced the internet, and Courtney's own website carries a response to Fraser's comments. But Courtney disparages the use of the internet to settle disputes. Well, if I had the another gangster, listen, what the fuck is that about especially with Frankie Fraser? If he was exactly what anyone thought he was, he'd do something about it. He's fucked around up on a typewriter, said he's a wanky, you know, I'm still sitting here, there's no guns on mine wearing a bulletproof vest. The court case has been changed from perverting the course of justice with a bent policeman into is Dave Courtney a grass? That's what the court case, the real remain thing is. And if I lost that argument, and that Barrow said you are grass and I'm saying no I ain't, if I lost that argument, I get shot. Right, and rightly so. If I lose the argument, if I come out of the old bailey and everyone believes I'm a grass, I deserve to be shot, someone do it to me. No? I'm asking you. There's still people out there after, after the old bailey and after it's all been written down what's happened. If there's anybody out there that thinks I'm a grass, shoot me, because I would rather not be here than have someone walk around thinking I was a grass. I have confidence for you. I'll lend you that. Courtney not only has to convince characters like mad Frankie Fraser that he is not a registered police informer, he must even reassure his own friends that he is not a grass. <laughs> Way stupid as an appointment. <coughs> Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, being Dave Courtney's mate was a proper fucking bonus up till four weeks ago. No one locked you for any money, you got laid for nothing, you didn't pay to go anywhere, you know, no one fucking, you know, and it was a right bonus. Now it's actually been on the front page of the paper. You are a resident informant. I ain't said he has spoke yet. It just said yeah, that, you know, yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Actually being Dave Courtney's mate might get you a smack in the mouth. No one's actually gone grass. And, and I know there might be people that are thinking and saying it, but every time they meet me, they go, David, <laughs> you know, you probably, I'd always know, you know, I mean, cross. Because there's this, this gangster thing's got a bit of romance around it. That's right. They don't want that. Crime don't pay, and Courtney's That's making it look like a fucking career's option, you know what I mean? A smaller person wouldn't have been given that amount of time yeah, to prove dick, himself, yeah. right? Because like, as soon as he comes out in the front page of your local paper, you are a registered informant. That's fucking enough. I've had some little geezer going, because he's got the paperwork and all that. The bald informant, uh, Mr. Courtney, the bald <laughs> informant, and I've had to go, can't even answer back, because it ain't my right, turn. Right, yeah. It ain't my turn, I want to jump over and bottle him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy was trying to describe me, he said, I am with the CIB3, he goes, we are known as the uncorruptible. He went, and we catch the corrupted. These are the people that make the public lose confidence in the police force. He goes, he rips, he puts his hand deep into the bowels of the stomach of the police force and rips the heart out of the police force by exposing him as fucking... And I went, I've got to go guilty for that. <laughs> you are the flashiest person I know. After me, you are the flashiest person I know. This is a proper argument I'm having. I'm having an argument that's going to be very highly publicised, win or lose, with the Metropolitan Police that I am not a grass. Right? Now, if it's proved I am a grass, I fucking die. Right, and make no mistake, and if it's proved I'm a grass, I fucking deserve to. Right, so that's a proper little argument, that's a proper little set of stakes. Now, fuck money, right, that's a proper little gamble, right, you know right. what I mean? If I lose this argument here, I'll die. It's Thursday the 14th of December, and Courtney's day of reckoning. He has come to the Old Bailey to receive the verdict. His wife Jenny is waiting nervously at a pub across the road. She has brought their daughter, whose birthday it is today. If Courtney goes down, she won't see her father again for many years. All the usual faces are present and looking anxious. Courtney doesn't just need to be found not guilty. He has to establish somehow that he is not a police informer. He has got a copper neck. Right, for being bent. Now the system's not like this, so they counteracted it and they've nicked Dave for something he hasn't done. And in the media, they portray, try portraying him as a grass, hoping that some other villain will come along and plug him in the head with a gun. The man is dead innocent, he's trying to make a decent living, he's writing books. The police do not like this whatsoever because they do not like it because he is liked. 
Six hours later, the jury returns a verdict. The main thing that should become apparent here is the fact that Dave's not only proved his innocence, he's also had the prosecution admit that he was not a police informant. The self-confessed murderer, Dave Courtney, has announced that he intends to leave Britain for good, convinced that the police will continue their efforts to bring him to justice. Meanwhile, this gangster remains a free man. Let me tell you, the nicest sound you'll ever hear coming out of anyone's mouth is when they say, not guilty. Right? That is the nicest noise you'll ever hear. It's the closest I've come to a premature ejaculation. Hey, <laughs> I love you. I love you. I hate to say that I told you so. Huh? I hate to say that I told you so, but... It's all just a lie! A lie! Well, I don't think I was expecting my um, uh, exit from the court to be so popular. You know what I mean? That, that, uh, during the trial, the prosecution said to her, she said, my dad's going to beat this case. And he went, they've already beat your dad. He's on the front page of the of grass and laughed. So that, that was his winning, that was his winning um, comment. And I'm sure that after they thought it was on the front page of the paper was a grass, I was going to be leaving from the back exit of the old bailey straight into a witness protection program. <laughs> I get through the front exit to a uh, hundred of people screaming and shouting for me, loads of pictures, and everyone have to pitch. <laughs> it's Hollywood for us. No, we're going Hollywood. Hey. Yeah. yeah, hello Hollywood, goodbye Peckham. <laughs> hello Hollywood. <laughs> and that. What a lover. What a fucking lover. A Trojan Horse production. Now watch out for Asylum Seekers, Punk Rock Opera, Borstal Boy, and the book Converted on LSD.